something that had greater meaning. So I began to study the works of Rudolf Steiner. How many of you heard of Rudolf Steiner? Show of hands. Okay, Rudolf Steiner was uh, an anthropomorphist. And he had an interesting philosophy, but much of it was attuned to nature. So I began by studying him. Then I met a Rajayogi, and I spent some years with him studying Rajayoga. I was only uh, about 18, 19 years old at that time. This man answered so many of my questions about unity, about courage, about humility, about perseverance, about truth, about living. And he said to me one day, would you like to continue your musical studies at Shantiniketa? You can learn something about Eastern music, Indian music. I said, great. So he said, save your money. I came from a very, a rather poor family. A hard working family. We always had enough food, not much else. And I worked two jobs. I worked in landscaping, maintenance and design with my father about 12 hours a day, and then I worked six hours at night in a machine shop to earn enough money to come to India and learn Eastern music at Shanti Niketan. So he, this Raj Yogi, responded, said to me, you come to California, and I'll see that everything is taken care of. So I did. Week after week goes by, and no news. He comes to me one day and he says, everything has fallen through. If you really want to do yoga and practice samatha, equality, go back to your family. Something rose up in me and said, no, I am going to India. Within one day, I met a lady. Her name was Dr. Judith Tyberg. Her family had been uh, very prominent members of the Theosophical Society. And she had a center in Los Angeles called the East-West Cultural Center, where she invited speakers on spiritual topics from all over the world. She said, oh, but you were meant to go to mother. I had just, I was 22, just about to turn 23. In those days, we had to send uh, a photograph and a sample of our handwriting to the mother. So I did that, and the telegram came back. Tell him he may come and stay as long as he likes. So I began my journey. I got a Japanese freighter that was filled in the front deck with gigantic redwood logs. 200 feet and more long. And we went via Alaska. And after a couple of days, we ran into a typhoon. And I watched those gigantic timbers break off the ship like you were throwing toothpicks into the sea. And the captain and his crew were on their knees praying. And he said to me, one more degree and we capsize. 
and something, and he said, no, I have to see the mother. We can't capsize. And we got through. <coughs> and I came to India. And I remember, because I, oh, first I went to Japan. First this freighter took me to Japan. And that was an incredible experience. <coughs> because I saw beauty as I had never seen it before. Beauty in, in landscape, in architecture in art, in painting, in sculpture. And I remember going to Kyoto, where the mother actually had been. And in Kyoto, there was a garden. In this garden, there were these beautiful houses. And a man, a monk, took us all through, and in the most perfect English I had ever heard, he told us the story of each building and all the gardens. Absolutely beautiful English. So I said to him, I have a question. Can I come back tomorrow morning? He said, come, 8 o'clock. So I came. I knocked on the door gate one time at 8 o'clock. And it opened, and there he was. And I said to him, my name is such and such, and I'm very grateful to be here. And he says, slow, no English. I said, no English? And he takes me to the first building, and he shows me a plaque in bronze inscribed with the whole history of that building. And an Englishman had taught him to memorize the whole black on every building. But he didn't know English. He knew only a few words. Well, I had a question because I was horticulture. And I said to him, outside this tree, big pine tree, maybe 90 feet, almost 100 feet tall, wrapped in straw bundles for 50 feet. And I, I couldn't uh, figure out what was this, why? And I said, sir, tell me about tree. And he said, tree sick, give medicine. 200 years more? Okay. Wow, what a lesson that was. Huh? He wouldn't be around for another 20, in another 20 years, he would no longer be there. But he knew that the tree would be healed in 200 years. That sense of timelessness, of caring for the earth, so far in advance when we would no longer even be there. It touched me so deeply. And I went deeper and deeper into the world of nature. So finally, oh, I was about to get on a French freighter to Madras, Chennai today. I'm in the hold, way down at the bottom of the ship, incredibly hot, maybe 35, 40 degrees <laughs> centigrade, no breathing. One hour goes by, another hour goes by. Suddenly my name is called. And I go up, and all these Japanese officers are there. It's a Sunday, and they said, you haven't signed the exit paper. We are deporting you from the ship. And there were some French sailors, they wanted to stow me away. <coughs> and uh, I said, no, no, I know I'm supposed to be here. And so they deported me. 
So now I'm in Japan, knowing no one, and this man comes to me, who had met me just a few days back, and he says, come, stay with me. So I stay with him for two weeks. And because I was a, a singer, he said, I want you to come and see something. So I go with him, and there's an orchestra of children, maybe 13 to 18 or 19. And he wants me to sing for them. But he asked them to play for me first. And they played the most beautiful music and they were all blind. All blind orchestra. See what we can be doing, what we can do. Everything is contained within us. Your focus in life should be that you can do anything because there is a divine spark in you that will allow you to achieve anything. Whatever it may be, without fear, without doubt, without hesitation, without worries about money or position, you can do anything. Now, I get to India, someone sends me $100 for a flight to Madras. And I remember, I had just turned 23. I will never forget the feeling when I landed in India. <coughs> I knelt down and I kissed the soil. alive at this time in the world's history when unprecedented evolution is taking place and you are young you are going to participate in it and you are at the center of the universe I like questions from all of you. Don't hesitate to ask me anything. Because if I don't know it, I'll find out. Or I'll ask one of your teachers. But don't be afraid. Don't hesitate to ask questions about anything. I'm going to pick up my book here. Because we have three days. And you're my captive audience, but I'm also your captive, because <laughs> I can't get out of it. So, here we are. Let's look at this. The vision of this university, integral and transformative learning. And I'm sure you know the core values. But we'll go into those as we progress. There is a line in the great poem by Sri Aurobindo. Who knows the name of that poem by Sri Aurobindo? 